Hello guys, we are going to start with a series of videos that will cover the frequently asked interview questions related to operating systems. I will cover all the major topics and probably discuss around 10 to 15 questions on each topic. I will keep the videos short so that you are not bored. And for each topic there will be two videos uh, divided into part 1 and part 2. So let's start with today's topic which is on the basics of operating system. So question number one, can we operate a system without having an OS? So the answer is yes, we can do it. Just remember that OS is an interface between the user and the machine. This means that it is also a software or a program which is developed by a group of programmers. For example, Windows is developed by a group of people who are working at Microsoft. So if humans can develop an interface, this means that they can directly interact with the hardware too. So now the question comes, so if we can directly interact, then why we need the OS? This is because to interact with the hardware, you need to know the working or the language of the device, which is not possible for most people. Right? Because everyone is not from a CSC background. So a bunch of people who are highly qualified or skilled develop the OS so that even a child or a person with no computer background can use the computer or mobile with minimum effort. So remember that we can operate the system without having an OS. The only challenge would be that you will need to know how every device works. Next question and a very important one. What is the difference between uniprogramming and multiprogramming systems? So this is how a uniprogramming system will look. So if you can see that apart from the OS, in the RAM, there can be only one process. So even if you have multiple processes, like there are four processes as an example that I've taken, but only one of them can be inside the RAM at any given time. On the contrary, in a multiprogramming system, there can be multiple processes in the RAM. The number of processes that can be in the RAM depends upon the size of each process and the size of the RAM that is installed in your system. Now, how is the working different for uniprogramming and multiprogramming? In uniprogramming, let us suppose that now P1 is in the system. So P1 starts executing using the CPU. If at any given point of time, the process P1 requires some kind of an input output to be done. So it will shift to one of the input output devices. For example, let us suppose that P1 process needs to print a document. So while it is printing the document using the printer, the CPU is idle. Now, can we shift the CPU to another process? The answer is no, because there is only one process in the RAM. So now the CPU time is being wasted. So this is the drawback of uniprogramming. In uniprogramming, one process will use the entire resources of the system until and unless it is over. Whereas in multiprogramming, if P1 is using the CPU and at any given point of time, it shifts to some input output device. Now the moment CPU becomes idle, another process from the available processes in the RAM is allocated to the CPU. Now why only P2 process is allocated? That is depending upon the CPU scheduling criteria that is being used. So that's a different topic. Let's just assume that we are going to allocate any process the moment CPU becomes free. Now the advantage is that all your resources are being used at all times. Another point of difference sometimes being asked is what is multitasking? So multitasking or time sharing is nothing but an extension of multiprogramming. In multitasking, the CPU time is equally shared among all the processes. All right, if you want to get into more detail, uh, there's a separate video on this, entirely on this difference between uniprogramming, multiprogramming and time sharing. So the link is mentioned in the description part. You can just watch those videos and the entire scenario will become even more clear to you. 
always remember that in uni programming and in multi programming there is no user interaction now what do you mean by there is no user interaction in uni programming and multi programming systems no user interaction means that all the input that is required by the program at any point of time during its execution must be pre supplied along with the program now what do you mean by this let us take an example that you write a c program in which there is a statement like printf enter name and then you have used this scanf statement to get the input from the user now once you execute this program and the control comes to this point printf enter name then you will type in the name from the keyboard which the process will accept and do further processing depending upon whatever code you have written afterwards now this is possible only because the system that you are using allows user interaction because all the systems that we use nowadays are multitasking systems or time sharing systems which allow user interaction but if you were to use uni programming or a multi programming system then the input username has to be supplied along with the code that you have written and you would have been required to save that name within a file along with the program so that the program can fetch that name from that particular file itself without requiring any kind of user input at any stage now question number 4 how is a kernel different from os now this is a very common question that student get confused with they normally ask okay sir which one we load first the kernel or the os so look at this figure operating system is an interface right between the user and the hardware okay so there are two phases of the operating system one towards the user which is going to take the input from the user and second interface which will interact with the hardware so the os is divided into two parts one is the shell and another is the kernel shell is that part which will interact with the user or which the user will use to pass on his commands to the operating system the shell will then pass on the command to the kernel now kernel contains all the working or all the services that the operating system is supposed to provide to the user so whatever services that you have studied if you remember there are six services that the os provides to the user and three to the system so all those services or all the functionality of the operating system is mainly in the kernel part so then whatever is the expectation of the user or whatever is the command of the user that is passed to the kernel via the shell and then the kernel passes on that to the hardware so the kernel is that part of the os which interacts with the hardware all right so that's why it is commonly called the heart of the os because the most crucial aspect of the operating system is to be performed by the kernel next question how are real time operating system different from traditional operating system now remember that a real time operating system is a time crucial system in which if the response does not come within the deadline then it can lead to disastrous effects for example all the embedded systems like microwave they all contain real time operating systems now just imagine that you are cooking some food in the microwave and you have set the timer to 5 minutes this means that the food will be ready after 5 minutes this means that the microwave must turn off automatically after 5 minutes immediately after 5 minutes but if it does not happen and the microwave goes on till 6 minutes what's going to happen obviously your food is going to burn and it might even be possible that your microwave gets burst and it may lead to very disastrous effects if a person is standing near to the microwave and just imagine if it bursts even it can lead to a serious injuries to that person so similar situations might happen in other real time operating systems also for example in the red light or if the landing gears of the aeroplane does not come on time so any such situation which can lead to disastrous impacts if the system does not respond within a deadline those are called real time operating systems 
now how they are different from traditional OS like Windows or Android or Linux that we normally use in our laptops or desktops or mobile phones. If you start an application like MS Word or Facebook and it does not open or it does not start for next one minute or two minutes or maybe five minutes if the load on the system is really high, then nothing serious is going to happen. The only impact is that your time is going to get wasted. That's it. Nothing else. So that was all for this part. Do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you get the notification of part 2 as soon as it is published. So see you next time. Take care.